you talk a lot about uh, it uh, that you know we've in pre discussions as well, and I think you've alluded to this earlier, but I just wanted to make sure we we put it in this way because I think it's a really good way for people to think about it is you want people to move from being a marketer in their business, which is what happened with the dropshipping craze because you could control the marketing and and you could drive sales with the marketing and then the rest of it just kind of sorted itself out. You threw up a Shopify shop, you plugged in Oberlo or all these other sort of uh, maybe AliExpress dropshipping sites and then you were able to just, you were able to drive the business by being a marketer. But in today's day and age, you say that you can't be a, you can't just be a marketer. You have to think about your business like a CEO. Uh, talk about that a yeah. little bit. So I say this because when I first started, I was the graphic designer, the marketer, the, the everything, right? And, um, and when you're dropshipping, you focus a lot on the marketing because like 95% of your traffic on dropshipping comes from Facebook and Instagram. So if you're not a good marketer, the traffic that you send is not going to be profitable, which I don't know, you either make money or lose money. So when you have marketing skills, when you just focus on being the marketer, that's good because like 95% of the traffic comes from Facebook or Instagram. But when it comes to branding, marketing is literally like, for instance, on dropshipping, let's say that you cut a, you cut a, a cake, right? Uh, and you, and uh, a huge slice, 90% of that cake will be like marketing, right? On dropshipping because the traffic comes from Facebook or Instagram. On branding, when you brand your, your e-commerce story, let's say you divide that cake in, I don't know, five parts, 20% content, 20% product creation, 20% marketing, it divides more equally. So that's something I realized that like I was like in dropshipping, I was making a lot of money by myself because I was just launched campaigns and I scaled them. And then I told my VAs and to, like, to help me with fulfillment, etc. But when it comes to branding, like there's, you got to pay a ton of attention to the other things. Like you can't imagine how big of a deal it's graphic design. It's so much, it's a huge deal. That's why I'm telling people like Fiverr, don't use Fiverr, man, because it's like you need someone that takes care of the whole graphic design department, congruency between the store, the products, the post on Instagram, everything has to be like one single organism. So what I tell people is like you will start realizing that you have to become the CEO once you build a brand, not so much the marketer, because the marketing is just 20 percent of that cake and not like 90 percent of the cake like in dropshipping. Congruency. That's a word I think of again and again, where, you know, customers are so skeptical. Maybe they've been burned by bad, you know, drop shipping businesses before, or they're like customers, they're, they're buying a lot still, but they're getting savvier and savvier. And if you do not have a congruent brand, if, if something looks off, it, people's spidey senses will be tingling and they'll leave your store immediately, right? Where did you find your design resource? Where you so design is such a powerful resource. You don't advocate Fiverr. Where did you, how did you go about finding the, the the prime design resources for your brand? Yeah. So the th the thing with Fiverr, the reason I said that is because in Fiverr you are using mostly freelancers, right? Like like freelancers, like hey, can you make a logo? Then can you make a post? Then can you make a cover photo? It's not like it's like individual work. When you treat when you treat the graphic design as individual stuff or individual tasks, you be, you you don't create a congruent brand, right? And this is something I learned. Like the difference between a freelancer and what we call now a graphic director, it's a completely different thing, right? A graphic director takes care of all the graphic design vision and not so much on a specific task. So. How does this collection fit with the concept of our store, the story of the store? How does how how does the Instagram post look um, compared to the design of the store and the collection? Then, like everything, man, like the colors, does do the are the colors like on our store? We're more like a tropical vibe. So my designer was like, "Hey, we need to remove all the black colors. We need to completely redesign the the the, the colors of the store and everything." which is what, what they just finished doing. And they, you cannot have the color black on your store. I was like, what's wrong with black? I always use black, like, you know, black font is like, it just doesn't look good for a tropical brand. It just doesn't look good. I'm like, okay, like you're the boss. So it's like this, it's more like a um, consultant, graphic design consultant that takes care of the whole big picture of the design and also manages the sub graphic designers that do that kind of like the tedious work and the time consuming work. And when you do Fiverr, for instance, you don't have control over that. Like you cannot get, usually cannot get on a call with a guy on Fiverr. So with that, that congruency is what generates high conversion rates. Like people are saying the newest software, 
you know, the newest uh, scarcity timer, what's the latest conversions hack. Honestly, man, you don't need any of that stuff. All you need is when you build a trust, when you build trust with your audience, you have congruency and people like your brand, they're going to buy it, not because of the scarcity timer or, or the little secure checkout badges. They were going to buy because they like your stuff. Like in Sarah.com, for instance, they don't have like fake scarcity stuff. They just like shirt, buy, you like it, you get it. You know what I mean? This, the conversion rate topic is not so much because it, it's not so much related these days on what's the latest conversions hack. It's more about do you have that trust with your audience and, um, and that congruency, right? And when you do have that trust, it opens up a whole other world of, of tactics uh, and of things that you can use. You may not have to use them as well, but but when you have that connection, if you approach it honestly, I feel like like I, I think of um, of Greta Van Riel, you know, uh, and her, her her the Fifth Watches brand basically, and they they use scarcity, but it's very real scarcity, and it works, you know, like and and Pure Vita as well, like they they you know with these collections, like they 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 make these collections, they make them limited, and then scarcity in that context, when you have a brand and when you have a connection using influencers, it just becomes so insanely powerful. She did six figures in a minute the first yeah. time she launched her, her watches there. So it, it, yeah. It, yeah, once you can level up and get a, a congruent brand, it opens up a whole world of incredibly powerful tactics as well. Yeah, no one is buying the fake scarcity, man. No one. Yeah.